Hey there, welcome to another episode of Monday Designs. I'm your host, Monday. This video is part of my tips and tricks series, and today we're going to be talking about long term storage and moving a collection. As a collector, I have a, a uh, collection that is pretty large. Um, I won't say that it's as large as some of the other YouTube streamers or anything like that. But I have right now around uh, 1,300 physical games. Um, and those games take up space. Uh, some of them are larger than others. Some of them are special edition, editions and take up quite a bit of room. Um, but you know the 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 thing is is that you know I've never lived in the same house you know all of my life so of course I've had to move my collection and store it and all this other stuff um, and that's what I'm going to go over in this video is just basically some of the things that I've learned on or learned to do and how to store my collection for quite some time or uh, you know keep keep it at least nice until I can move it and stuff like that so the first thing is uh, moving my collection I have never used movers to move my collection I have always uh, used my own car which I actually have a, uh, a model 2 Prius it's a 2006 and uh, you know, it, it, it's large enough for me to make probably multiple trips, but at least I know that I'm taking care of my collection and carefully moving it so that it's not jumbling around and I'm not having to replace tons and tons of jewel cases and I'm not, you know, destroying the collection while I'm moving it. Um, so that's my first tip is do not use movers to move your collection for you take the time do it yourself moving companies are only going to give you what they believe is the market value of your game that doesn't mean that they're going to give you the eBay price it does not mean that they're going to give you the price charting price it's going to mean that they're going to find some sort of insurance adjuster that they're paying and they're going to pay him to give to lowball you and you know, you're just you're just not going to get what you believe is what the value of, of your games are, and you know they don't know. You know, they no mover is going to know or respect the amount of time that you've put into your collection. And heck, who who knows? There are even some unscrupulous movers out there that will actually steal things, and uh, that's actually happened. Uh, around my neighborhood as well where movers have just forgotten things or something got lost in transit and it was basically something that the mover wanted and so they took it home. Uh, the next thing is uh, storage. Uh, you know the main thing that I use for storage is comic book short boxes. Uh, these things are fairly cheap um, you know and they're cardboard so they're light lightweight and they're small enough so that when you load them up with games uh, even if like really heavy games that it's not going to be too heavy for your average person to pick one box up at a time and carefully move it so that you're not damaging any, anything inside now I use these boxes to store quite a few things. The only thing that I have not been able to store in these things is special editions of games like uh, the Xbox 360 special edition version of Batman Arkham, uh, let's see, it was one of the Arkham games, um, specifically the one that has like the plastic battering on a stand. Now that's way too big for a comic book box or, or these short comic book boxes. But the other thing is I have not stored uh, 3DO games in them because those tall boxes are a little bit too tall for the comic book short boxes. However, you know they work perfectly for DVD size games. Uh, they work great for CD jewel cases. Uh, they work great for Sega Saturn uh, long boxes and everything else that's kind of in that same category. Um, 
Yeah, and again, they're fairly cheap. Uh, they're easy to move. Um, the cardboard is actually pretty robust so that you can actually do long-term storage with them as well. Uh, they are not going to protect your collection against water. Uh, to do that, uh, I actually have uh, my collection in my garage standing up on wire shelves that are standing pretty far off the ground so that nothing can happen to them. You know, I would have to have a good three feet of water in my basement before uh, before a single one of my games would actually get wet. Uh, and that's basically how I, you know, how I store all of my games. You know, I still have not been able to uh, get enough room in my own house to uh, create a game room yet. But you know, we have family living with us, so you know, that's that's the thing. Is like eventually, when uh, when one of the kids decides to move out, and they you know get up and stand on their own and. I believe that they won't be coming back. I'm going to start creating my game room. Um, but, you know, again, these are just some of my personal tips and tricks. I would be very interested to see what you guys have uh, tips on, on how to do long-term storage, um, you know, just to try to protect the games or how, how you guys moved your collection when you moved as well. And just, you know, Leave me, leave me what you've done and what you've found successful in the comments below. Well, that's it for this episode of Monday Designs. I'm your host, Monday, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. If you like what you see, you can support me and my channel on Patreon by clicking the link below. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.